Forbes and Gohuma Pride on Buffalo Kill Gallagher Pan 2 track, just to the south of the pan. Sorry, east of the pan. Now, I'm in two minds. I don't think we should stay here. What I do think we should do, well, let's spend two minutes here, and then I think we must go back to the kill, because I haven't actually managed to see it yet. I think we're going to have to move around through some thick stuff. It's not far. You can hear the growling and grunting going on. And there's still quite a lot of conflict. And these cubs are absolutely covered in muck. Yeah, in fact, let's go now. Basically, the little cubs have been inside this carcass. There's quite a lot left of the carcass. Much meat. And there's a little thing having a good feed. And by usual suspects, I mean the two Avoca males, Blondie and Mohawk. I think all the cubs, I haven't counted them yet. There's quite a lot of growling, but what I do think is quite interesting if you look closely towards the far right, that's it, far right hand side there, you can see the Avoca male, I think it's, I think it's Mohawk. I think it's Mohawk. He's feeding right next to a tiny cub. Absolutely no problem at all. Hear the cub shouting. It's pretty gross, this scene. Uh, I'm sorry about that. Remember, we've watched the buffalo kill here a few times. But the last one we watched was unsuccessful when Trish had them. And it was because the buffalo managed to back himself up against the lodge fence eventually and then make a run for it. They have to be so committed to make a buffalo kill. Which obviously they were last night. here for a while. I don't think we'll get too much of a better view. Maybe when that male behind us moves back to the kill, we might try and place ourselves where he is. But this is not bad. Especially as the light starts to catch their eyes. It's going to be very clear and very hot today. And so we must enjoy this golden light while we have it. It's going to be one of those baking days today. A couple more coming down towards the kill now.
you can see here, they're, they're not vaguely concerned. No one's having even the slightest look at us. Shame, just behind the sticks there, little cub's gone off to say hello to Blondie. He's now licking him. Oh, I want to see that. I'm just going to roll back again. Shall we see if we can get a view there? There we go. You got it? Let's see if they do it again. The little one went up to Blondie and gave him a big hug. That's so sweet, isn't it? I'm not sure lying nose to nose like that's necessarily a good idea. I can imagine that the collective smell of their breath must be pretty offensive at this stage. Three stations here. Um, you can make your way. Um, we'll move out when you get here. There's somebody coming all the way from Cheetah Plains, so I'm not going to worry about that. He's miles away. By then it'll be so hot and stinky here. No, the flies. Interestingly, jazzy blue skies are not coming anywhere near us because I think there's so much to eat on that carcass that they're really not interested in us. So, although it might look like we're having a, there are a lot of flies there and potentially a, a miserable time for us, it's actually not bad at all. The thing that is going to offend the human being more than anything in the next day or so is going to be the appalling odour. Because what these lions do, while the buffalo is rotting around them, is they go to the loo. And in fact, Blondie has made himself his first morning constitutional quite close to the kill. This poor, no, it's a massive buffalo bull, this actually, and he's not in bad condition either. You can just see his head at the top there. Yeah, he was in pretty good nick when they offed him last night. still hear the cubs fighting with each other and with the adults. His hips are not showing anymore. So they're putting on weight. I think they're much healthier than the ones of around 2016, where I think, interestingly, the volume of meat they were eating in 2016 was higher than it is now. This is the cubs, because there were buffalo dying all over the place. But I think the nutrition they were getting from it was so poor that it just wasn't helping them. I think they're in better shape. Hmm. Smells
Well, it's not too bad just yet, although somebody, some lion has made a little morning dump somewhere close by. But it's not too appalling just yet. But this is going to be in the beating sun today. And the buffalo is going to rot very quickly. As are the bowels of its consumers. All the cubs, or some of the cubs, are still desperate not to leave. They know they'll be hungry again, they don't want that feeling. Real scrap going on there, isn't there? <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and <laughs> Nine comes a strolling in. Can you see it there, Seth? <laughs> We've got nine, everyone. Where have you been? You just keep strolling out. <laughs> mm. Ah, so the kill is further in. Into the bush. What was that? Somebody squeal? Hello, Papa. I need to have a play. Oh, Blondie shook his mane, and then the little one shook too. Ow. 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 Oh, who is a fierce lion? Ow. <laughs> too cute. Obviously, this little one knows that there's a competition going and Sebrig has gotten the award and has now decided no I will be the cutest look at that face yes you fat belly happy cub tongue sticking out I'm so happy. Raw, raw, raw. Oh, oh, they're napping together. That was amazing when I was hearing the updates there. Although I could barely hear over the screaming of some fighting cubs just there. There was a huge fight earlier. Even all the adults woke up and were like, hey, 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 we're trying to sleep. Exactly, I thought the same thing. They've been gorging themselves, yet they're still wanting to drink. So there's a little dung beetle rolling a ball between the lines. Can you see it there? Playing with fire, dung beetle. She's like, they're distracted, they're distracted, let's go by, they're distracted. Imagine seeing a... <laughs> I know, a cub would see that and think, wow, I could play with that. Almost there, dung beetle, almost there. Check it, go. Made it, made it, finally. Let me just check my orientation. Okay, keep going, keep going. <laughs> it's so sweet to see them all run towards us.
Oh, my goodness, even I took a, took a step back there. Interesting, he doesn't want the females to feed and he's getting a bit aggressive towards them, but he's letting the cubs feed. I think that tells me that he definitely feels it's a type of bond to these cubs. They don't really exist. He's letting them feed without any issue. One of the females comes through and he's got a problem. Look at him. He's giving her a snow. Looks like Amber. She still hasn't turned to me properly. I'm sure she was here when we arrived and then she submissively turned over. Let's watch him. Yep, that's Amber. It looks quite sweet that he's allowing them to feed like this, but I'm not sure about his motivation. Scattered. The females have all scattered. There's one or two remaining calm. <laughs> oh, Lara Moore, you say don't get stuck in there, little ones. That is a proper possibility. I can imagine one getting stuck in there and then these adults having to pull them out. That must be pretty scary. Oh, careful, there's a there you go. You stuck my cub. Oh, here the small free cub. Did you see that? <laughs> so, the, of the three of Focus, the dark mane blondie and Mohawk, they've all mated with the Yankahuna. So they all believe that these cubs are all theirs. And that is how they will make sure that none of them will kill any of these cubs. That's how the females do that, by mating with most of them.